Okay, so I disassembled the snowblower. It's a Toro S200. This is my grandmother's. It didn't really run. Like, you get it started, it run for a couple seconds, that'd be it. Took it apart. Got a can of carb cleaner from my dad. And I've been working on it about two hours now. Took it down to the engine block. Got the crankshaft and everything out. Have to put the bearings back together. The pulleys, the exhaust, everything's come off. The um, pull starts right there. The electric starts there. The cooler's there. And the ignition system is right there. Everything's a mess. And up here on the bench, I'm in the middle of making new gaskets because gaskets were destroyed in pulling the engine apart because it's 30 years old. Here's a carburetor that I get to rebuild in a few minutes. I have to disassemble it, clean it completely, and reassemble it, then dial it in. We'll see how it goes. This is going to be a short vlog, but some neat stuff in it. Okay, so this is the carburetor and bolt assembly to go right onto the side of the engine block. Right in here, there's a gasket. And when I disassembled the engine, that tore. The gasket that was on here tore. And the gasket that's right here tore. So, I took this piece of gasket paper and proceeded to trim out gaskets, which there are two in here right now. I, get, I made one for right here, one for right here. I'm going to have to make one for the bottom end of the engine right here. This one stayed intact right here, so did this one up on the head. Those are good. The exhaust manifold one is good enough. I, this is where those other two go. One right here, one right there. And that's it. More than a couple minutes when I put it all together. Okay, so you probably noticed there's a lot less parts over here now. I finished bolting the crankshaft back in. Put the bearings back together for right here and in here on the bottom of the cylinder, greased the other side, tap the shaft back in, or actually it's the crank shaft, put the side plate back on, made a new gasket for right here because the old one was destroyed, here's the new one, I got the reed valve back in right here, and I'm putting on the carb mount right now which will then bolt the carburetor back on. And then you get to bolt the head back on, the exhaust manifold, and it's done. You get to bolt it. And then it just bolts right back into the snowblower. Okay, so I got the head bolted on, got the spark plug in, carburetor's on, side plates on, put the I don't even know what that is. It looks almost like a bearing shield or something. Don't know what it's called. Put the bottom plate on. Crankshaft's in. Exhaust, the exhaust manifold's not bolted on yet because that's like the last step. Like after the motor's bolted into the snowblower. The reed valve is bolted in right here. Next step is the ignition system. Okay. So I just got the ignition system all put back in, plugged back into the spark plug. This is the throttle governor. As the engine needs more th throttle, if it's feeling it's choked, it will automatically pull on this via the exhaust, which comes out of a little hole right up in here. This throttle governor is on the 
throttle itself right here, attached to a spring from the other side, which attaches to a piece of the frame. Ah, that's it. A lot more parts on it than were earlier. Okay, so I have the electric start bolted on. Didn't put the middle clip on the wire on the motor yet, but I got the whole clutch. It looks like a clutch. It's really the bolt for the pull start and the fan and the electric start pulley type thing. The gear right here for the electric start to kick against. Got that all on. Next, I get to bolt that piece on right there. And then that motor drops in right here bolts on the fuel tank bracket, that piece right there, bolt the end of the uh, pull start bolts on to right near the fuel tank, then the motor bolts on right there in those four holes. If I seem tired, it's 11.30 right now. I've been doing this since 2.30 in the afternoon. <laughs> except for like two hours while I went to church. A lot of tools. And I'm playing Dido. Okay, so I got the clutch assembly for the pull start on. Wires are all there. Primer, carburetor, the heads, or the head, because it's only a single cylinder spark plug, the electric start, the bearings, everything except for the exhaust manifold is on the motor. A lot less parts than there were earlier, that's for sure. It's all tools over there. Bolted in there. Okay, so I got the engine bolted in. Both side panels bolted in. Basically, I could drop fuel in and start it right now. And that, I don't believe, is the actual top for it because it pushes on the fuel tank and the fuel tank won't fit. Right now, it's quarter after one in the morning and almost done cleaning up. There's just a couple tools laying about. Okay, so I just finished the go-kart. I jerry-rigged the entire engine on here. 50cc Tecumseh two-stroke. We have the variable throttle right here. That's this cable coming down. Goes down here, goes down the side, stops right there in the linkage. All right, Nick, flick the linkage. And that adjusts the throttle knob on the carb right there. The choke, which is right here, we don't use. It just starts on its own when you push it. It's a four and a half to one belt drive. The same 5 8 inch grooved belt that was on the snowblower originally. Pulled tight, bolted right into three quarter inch plywood. The manifold comes right out and stops right there. It's straight pipe. Loud. One quart fuel tank, I think is what that is. Might be a little more. Might be 24 ounces. Might be a little less, 24, I don't know. It says on it somewhere, I bet. But it originally ran 87 to 1, or 87 octane at 32 to 1 oil. We're running her at 93 octane at 32 to 1 oil. We took the gap on the spark plug from 30 thousandths to about 15 thousandths. Get her running a little hotter. Pulls a lot more power. This piece of plexiglass right here that I haven't pulled the sticker off of yet keeps your hand from hitting the teeth right here because that would shred your hand. It's from the, the original electric start. And my dad told me to put it there so you didn't shred your hand. Here's your on and off switch. It's in the off right now. Up's on. 
down kills the engine. It has the original brakes from when it was its own cart. So it has the original brakes, just the paddle set right here. And when I was turning the engine over via the wheel, my finger slipped up in there, dislocated my middle finger. That was Friday. This is Tuesday now. Originally, we had the fuel tank bolted right up here on the wood, only the hose was level to the carburetor, so it wasn't getting enough fuel into the carb, and it was just stalling out. Now we raised it with another piece of wood right here. That's just about it. We have slots from the original engine. We used sheets of plywood to space the engine up high enough. We used the original slots right there for adjusting the engine's tension on the belt. This is the original pulley from the snowblower. I broke the center out of it so that it would fit around the axle. And then, that's just about it. This is that engine that I rebuilt from my other videos. It's a little 50cc Tecumseh, like I said. should run at 3 horse. I think it's running out near 4, between the higher octane and the gap being tighter, because when I tightened the gap on it, she pulled out a lot more R's and had a lot more torque. Same Carlisle tires, they're aired up at 40 PSI. I have no clue what they're rated for. Never said on the side of them. There's the original S200 snowblower. This is a second one that I just pulled the carburetor off of. The original carburetor is right here. The problem we had is the adjusting pin right there, where my thumb is, broke off right inside the engine. It was a little Teflon pin. From all the adjusting, trying to get the engine dialed in, it broke. So now we have the other carburetor and two steel pins. That's the way this one was set up. A lot nicer.
header wound out to 28 and a half. It's not as hot as I thought it would be. Cooler.